Give me a little intro there, Gomer. listening to the station 71 podcast my name is mario and this week i'm joined by my co-hosts beth and brian so we are doing a ride rehab this week uh we're gonna take a couple rides give them some plus ups maybe talk about some things that they need to change some stuff that could make them better and go from there this one's always a fun one so i am super excited for this but we have some housekeeping and some news topics to cover before we get to that point so let's dive in with the news. Uh, first thing we have on this list is we have an updated lighting effects uh, package coming to Haunted Mansion. Um, always exciting to see this attraction get some love. I figured this was a nice one to throw in there with the topic this week. But uh, the graveyard scene is getting just a little bit more of a lighting enhancement. Uh, it looks like the ghosts are looking a little bit cleaner. Um a lot of the graveyard scene is now lit from the interior, giving some of the scenes more visibility, giving um, just a little bit more of that like ghostly vibe to it. All of the pictures look good, but I would expect nothing, nothing less for something like this. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, this is the kind of stuff that I, I it, it seems small, but I, it's what I want to see Disney do more of is just do minor upkeep things give a little bit more pizzazz to good attractions you don't have to go through and always do something big and you know particularly noteworthy just keep it fresh enough that it's feels up to date you know yeah definitely and i also think that it's good that they're doing this kind of upkeep in preparation for the hat box ghost so that it won't look quite so out of place that's you know? a good point. I didn't think about that. So I yeah. also think that this is update. Yeah. I also think this is one of those like really cool updates where um it just proves that these classic attractions still hold as well as you know, obviously we talk about the Haunted Mansion because we love the Haunted Mansion, but like to the average guest this this attraction still holds some value because they're willing to invest in these minor upgrades that just kind of plus it up. And and like you said, Brian, bring it to, you know, give it that little refresh that it needs sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, Our next exciting news topic is that uh, (laughs) they are adding pickleball to the Walt Disney world resorts and hotels. Was I the only one that was like not aware that pickleball is like a huge thing right now? I didn't realize how big it had gotten recently, but for some reason, my like Instagram feed has been getting absolutely blasted with like pickleball shorts, and I don't understand <laughs> because I've never played before. But apparently, it's big. Oh yeah, apparently it's a massive like trend right now. But so much so that they are adding pickleball to several of the Walt Disney World uh, recreational tennis courts which I also feel like I did not know existed, so. Yeah, I think that's such a weird thing, like the concept of being at Disney World and taking time out of your day to play tennis or pickleball. I could see it, like, on, like, your hotel day, if you get there early or or later or something like that, but I don't know. I feel like it's not as big of a... I feel like it's not, like, that big of a thing that I would... Go ahead. (laughs) i was just gonna say i guess it's like a fun thing to be like if you're really into it like if you're a big tennis player big pickleball person to be like ooh, let me go play a little bit on the courts at disney world and that's kind of like a unique experience i guess especially with like this one in the picture where you can see like the contemporary in the background that's like a cool setting to be playing like a sport that you love but for like a regular person i feel like no one's ever gonna take time out of their day to do that to for me i guess it's like first of all the concept of exercising on a disney (laughs) vacation is wild to me because i feel like i am exhausted at the end of every single day and Mm -hmm. like you said i know that this is probably intended for 
their resort day, like a day off where they're not going to the parks. But I always am like, that's my relax day. That's my go to the pool day. I mean, for us, it's usually like a Disney Springs day. But at the same yeah, time, I could see that being like, I don't know. It's one of those things where I feel like it is just another activity to do. And I can't imagine it's going to be that popular. But it's cool that they have it. Yeah. Um, next one that we have on here is that uh, Animal Kingdom just recently celebrated its 25th birthday. And for its birthday, Disney has dug up a time capsule buried by the opening day cast members. Um, I thought this was neat. It didn't really have like a ton of crazy stuff in it. It just had some like opening day maps and uh, a floppy disk of some photos, a VHS tape of the new cast member orientation sessions um, and some day one <laughs> merchandise. Like all of that stuff is exactly what I would expect to be in a time capsule like this. Um, I'm just happy that we're doing things like this still. <laughs> Yeah. I think it's kind of wild that this pun intended is wild that <laughs> that I feel like this was very un like completely unknown as far I mean I never knew about this time capsule yeah. until literally I saw this video of it being opened so I think I'm wondering I'm like are there other cool time capsules or stuff like buried around the parks that we don't know about Ooh, that's a good question I did think it was cute that they had the toothbrush of one of their silverback gorillas that was like Aww. his first toothbrush <laughs> and he's still like at the park. Yeah, I did see that. That was cute. So that was like, I feel like the the one really like substantially interesting item, but I would love to look at those maps. Yes. Oh my gosh. And could you imagine if they like auctioned off the pins, how much those would go for? Oh my gosh yeah I imagine uh, i think that's... i have an animal kingdom map from not like opening day obviously but shortly after it opened i think we went like the year after the park opened the front cover of my map has tarzan rocks on it oh yeah so if that's... That oh wow anything. it's a decently old one then <laughs> so i need to f dig that out of a box somewhere so some point between, let's see, 1999 and 2006 is when that map would have been from. Dang. Yeah. It, I think it, it was probably 1997 or 1998 when I went. Wait, no, it opened in 1998, so it had to have been like 1999, 2000, yeah. right? Yeah, it opened 99, closed 2006, so somewhere between there. So probably 99 if that's the time yeah, frame you're putting it in. Yeah, probably, because that would have been, like, they, would, they probably would have been promoting it on the front of the map, so probably 99. Yeah. The floppy Crazy. disk thing is great, though. Like, how, do they even, I mean, I'm sure they make a thing that you could put it in and read it, right? Is, or yeah, is it so obsolete that it's, to. like, beyond? Yeah, I've seen the little floppy disk to USB converters. I just went on Amazon and found a whole bunch of them. Um, they're like 20 bucks, which is crazy. <laughs> I legit am going to like look into that. I have a bunch of floppy disks from like middle school that I would love to know what's on them. I was about to ask what you were holding on to them for, <laughs> but... <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like found them in like a box at my dad's house, like in the attic kind of thing. Uh -uh. And I know they're still up there. But it's not my house, so it's not like I need to get rid of them. You know, that's free storage at your parents. <laughs> it's free storage. <laughs> uh, hysterical. Um, next one that we have on here is that uh, the sale of annual passes has resumed. We haven't talked about this one. This one's kind of a little bit on the older <laughs> side. Um, but according to this blog Mickey article for the first time in more than 500 days, all tiers of Walt Disney world annual passes are available. I think that's kind of a little bit of a misnomer because they have kind of like messed around with passes a little bit since yeah. the last time they sold them, <laughs> but uh, passes are available again. The prices are mind boggling. Yeah. They, yeah. Like, Fourteen hundred dollars for the well, Incredit Pass. Mm -hmm. So we were talking about this on Discord. I guess that's a good plug for our Discord. Uh, apparently, the prices aren't that much different than what they were when they stopped selling them. But it doesn't change the fact that they're a little outrageous. 
Yes, I, I, I'm sure that they're probably pretty similar to what they were, but at the risk <laughs> of sounding like a boomer or something here, I'm just like, when I, my first annual pass was like less than $800 and that's like out of state price. Like cause out of state, the only thing you can get is the top tier pass and mm-hmm. you don't get a payment plan. You have to pay it in full. So there are people out there just casually dropping $1,400 for these passes. And I'm just like, dang, like dropping 800 bucks at one time for an annual pass to a place that I only visited like four times, three or four times a year back in 2017 felt like a lot. I can't, the, like the percentage that they've increased since then is just crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and you don't I get mean, memory maker anymore. Yeah, and we we've talked about that before too. That like it's wild how much they've changed the annual pass and increased the price and all of that stuff. But I don't know. I feel like we'll see how this plays out. We'll see what what they do. I feel like there's eventually a point where that bubble breaks, but we'll see. Yeah, <clears throat> not until people are willing to not willing to pay it. <laughs> Um, and then the last little article we have on here <laughs> that's more of a, a thing, little thing. Uh, is that not to get too too political here because we're talking about Disney more than anything, but this does kind of involve Disney. If you've been following the uh, Disney v. Ron DeSantis uh, debacle that has been going on, Disney has now turned the tables and is suing Florida Governor Ron DeSantis for basically everything that has been going on. <laughs> oh, gosh. It's... Wild. yeah, And just for clarification, this is not just DeSantis, but it's um, basically everybody that was on the board uh, for this whole ordeal it's Mm -hmm. yeah yeah honestly like big kudos you know obviously we're all disney fans because we're here recording this podcast but at the end of the day they're still a corporation their thing is to make money but i feel like this is this is about more than that this is like this is personal Yeah. yeah well and that's, it's that's both the thing sides where... trying to send a message at this point. Yeah. Right. And that's the thing that, like, it gets hard to separate it from being a political thing and it not being a political thing, like, just because of how this has played out. And uh, we in private have been talking more about how uh, this whole thing has shaken up and it feels like Disney has not really said anything, but everything that's gone down has felt more like targeted at them because you know you kind of don't expect the big corporation to turn around and do anything when you're the government but yeah. here we are they had the Uno <laughs> reverse card in their pocket waiting for the right time <laughs> oh gosh yeah i don't know this is wild i cannot wait for this to shake out and see what happens I can't imagine that this is one of those things where it doesn't just get settled behind closed doors, unfortunately. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But we'll see. Um, so that said, we are through our news. Uh, we do have a little bit of housekeeping, and I feel like I'm going to say this, and it's it's going to not come out the way I want to say it, so I'm just going to rip the Band-Aid off. Uh, our listeners will notice that we have kind of slowed down on releasing episodes uh we are going to be moving from every week or trying to be every week to more of a once a month type of deal uh it's just been a little bit hard to get through recording episodes about uh as often as we used to life has just kind of changed and we're accepting that we're not going anywhere we're not you know this is not goodbye we're not yeah. throwing in the towel no, we just and have we're a lot going on. <laughs> mm-hmm. We're trying to stay consistent and give more of a this is this is less us moving to a monthly basis because we want to slow down the show and more of we just want to be realistic with what we can do. Um yeah. it's just 
like I said, life kind of gets in the way sometimes. And while we're trying to be consistent, sometimes you just can't be. Um, right. You know, and <clears throat> we love doing this podcast and we love interacting with everybody, especially our very wonderful Discord base. But at the end of the day, we are real people and we do have jobs and families and some of us, like Brian, having whole children <laughs> and, you know, whole children. <laughs> Mario got married, so he's got his wifey. I went back to school, and I'm getting my master's, and we just have so much going on that while we love doing this, and I, I'm sure I pr can probably speak for all of us that we wish we had more time to do more. It just simply is not the case. But yeah, and we I continue just at I, less frequency. And I, I don't want to like speak for everybody when I say this, but I feel like this this was not an easy decision to make. Like no. we all kind of felt this weight for a while that uh it just was not feasible. There were weeks where we would say we were gonna record and then just wouldn't wouldn't talk for like two weeks because we just didn't have the time. And this is just the most manageable way to set that expectation. Um that said, I think this is also going to open a lot of interesting doors for us because we were talking about this before. We we had this whole discussion beforehand before we started recording of like what being on this basis means. And I think I feel very optimistic about that because we kind of landed that like, yeah, we talk about something we love every week, but there are some weeks where those episodes feel a little bit hollow because we're just kind of recording to record. So now we have this this window of like, oh, well, maybe we can do a little bit more. We can stretch that time frame with a lot more information or a lot more informative topics and kind of not use those weeks to fill a gap and just put stuff out there. So um, I hope you're still with us on this. And I hope that, that you're as excited about the content being a little bit more uh positive and feeling like it matters <laughs> but yeah. i'm excited for this i think it's a good change and i think at the end of the day we put up enough of a fight to try to keep going with this that uh, i'm very optimistic that once a month will be a good choice for us <clears throat> yeah i agree and another thing that we were discussing when we were talking about this before we re started recording tonight was that we would love to hear more feedback from you guys we used to get quite a few emails and like dms on twitter and instagram and stuff like that so if you have an idea that you want us to talk about or you have any questions for us you have any feedback please feel free to reach out to us probably the best way i think is by emailing us because i check that email pretty regularly station 71 podcast at gmail.com so and if you want to do a little call in, we can play it. We used to do that, and that was really oh, fun. Oh, yeah, we used to do that People all the time. <laughs> call our Google number, which I don't know what that is or if that's set up anymore, but maybe we'll be able to figure that out soon and maybe even do some more live events on Discord like we used to because those were yeah. super fun. And I also think that, like, the way that I'm looking at this is we are saying we're going to once a month, but once a month is kind of more of a baseline than it is, like, the actual truth there may be some months where we can squeeze in a second recording somewhere along the lines and that'll you know drop unexpectedly but for now once a month is really the like absolute target for what we are are being realistic with so i think it's i feel like it has a lot less of an implication than we're making it out to be <laughs> yeah definitely but that said, uh, we have a very exciting topic this week with our ride rehabs. Um, so does anybody want to go first? Because uh, usually we try to start these with our, our rules and our layouts, but we kind of just said pick an attraction and each host has to plus it up. So like Wild West style. It really kind of is. Just, <laughs> we're throwing it to the wall and hoping something sticks. So I have... I feel like a couple of things I want to get out of the way. I feel like these are obvious and I hope I'm not like ruining your guys' answers, but I feel like a mode Yeti. Let's just go ahead and say that. Get that out of the way. <laughs> You're really ripping the bandaid off tonight. Yes. 
Carousel of Progress in Scene. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Journey into Imagination. Yeah. Well, Journey into Imagination what? Reverting it back to the old okay. style. Okay. If you have a okay. different plan than that, it, that's cool. But no, I no, just no, no, wanted no. to get those three out of the way as like the things I feel like we always talk about. I So I wrote down some stuff for Journey into Imagination. And I feel like I can throw them at the wall because they're not super like they're not super prominent, but I feel like they're all things we talked about before, right? Like journey into imagination is the perfect ride for a trackless system. Give us that. Um, Utilize more of the actual like imagination Institute aspect of it. Uh, I feel like we've done this ride. So like for so many years now where it feels very cynical and um, I don't know the best word to explain it, but like give us all four, you know, areas, maybe not taste, but like, do something cool. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like there's just so much potential that's lo- left on the table with Journey into Imagination. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. Yeah. So if you guys had like other ideas for it other than reverting it back to the original, or even if you had wanted to revert it back to the original and go into more depth, I think that's a good segue. I struggled with like a serious... Um, like a, a actual planned layout for this attraction. I feel like I it's weird because I was thinking about this today. I think that this attraction has all the bones of a good ride, but there's like just something missing about it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, for sure. That's also not me like saying, I, I'm sorry if that sounded like I was saying I have a plan for this because <laughs> I surely do not. But <laughs> that was like, that was neither the... does Disney. So. No, it, it's just so wild because, I mean, we talk about this all the time. I feel like it's, it's so, um, it's just not what it should be. Like it, it feels like it's missing that one piece that just clicks it together. And I think maybe like, better writing would maybe save that um that said i also don't know that i want to lose uh eric idol from this attraction because like why not he doesn't care (laughs) listen we all know figment's his best friend he loves the you know the animated little fuck (laughs) i have to beat myself out on that one (laughs) it's just so sad that you get like such a, a high quality talent to come in there for that and then it is what it is you know mm-hmm. like what yeah. a waste definitely i yeah i don't know and i feel like the one thing that would make it better is just turn that right into a trackless system like <laughs> it's, yeah. it's keep they need to keep figment as like an animatronic maybe they can give us a better version of an animatronic with him I, I think the story is fine. Like it, it? it feels like it's, uh, <laughs> I think the story, I agree. The story is fine. The execution of it is. Yeah. Not. Yeah. It's like I said, it's got the bones of a good attraction. It's yeah. just not, it, it's not all the way there, which is weird. It literally, it feels like they never finished the ride. I mean, well, I mean, we do skip two labs, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like one thing that would be actually pretty easy to do that would significantly enhance the ride, in my opinion, and I feel like a lot of people's opinions, because I hear this complaint a lot, is just to change Figment's voice. Oh, yeah. Like, that's, to make that's him easy. It less of like this annoying nuisance and more of like someone with like childlike wonder and innocence. Yeah. I feel like we go a long way with making that attraction more tolerable. Definitely. And that would be easy. That's literally just having someone re record the lines. Yeah, I think that would go a long way. I also think like there's enough feedback online about the scenes that don't work too. And all you really have to do for those scenes that don't work, like the like the skunk smell. I mean, we we've talked about that a couple of times. Uh, all you have to do is just kind of like invert that to something that's more like about um, the positives of it and not Figment just trying to derail the entire attraction. 
Mm-hmm. And that's also weird because I feel like as a concept that kind of works, but I don't know. He feels more mean than yeah. Wonder is. Yeah. Yeah, he just he seems like an annoying little kid. Yeah. Instead of like someone who's interested in like learning and imagination and being creative. I feel like that would make a big difference. Yeah. So uh do you guys want my like a smaller throw it at the wall kind of rehab that I thought was comical that I really worked on. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I, for my choice was I wanted to plus up the seas and no, my, my answer is not that you have to ride the <laughs> attraction to get through the, uh, the, to the gift shop. Honestly, um, that would have been hilarious though, <laughs> because then nobody could make fun of you about that anymore. I really like I thought about it. I was like, if I throw this at the wall, that is the thing that that I need to bring up. Like I need to bring up this joke. Um but honestly I think that like um I I feel like the Seas with Nemo and Friends is such a weird mashup because my biggest gripe with it has always felt that like you have the land and the seas, which feel like they should be two kind of like cohesive pavilions that aren't really like a hundred percent, you know, cohesive. Like they, they have their themes and they should stick to their themes, but they should feel like they're part of the same, like cut from the same cloth, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the land pavilion does everything that I want it to very well. Uh, whereas the seas has that weird, like, Hey, we just shoved Nemo in here. Cause he's a fish. Yeah. Um, and I, I want more, I feel like edutainment is kind of a thing that like we're moving a little bit away from in Epcot and I want more of that. Um, and I think that the cool thing that they could do with the seas is they could kind of talk more about like the different biomes of the seas. Um, and obviously you can't really do like the land where, you know, you have like the different scenes and things like that, that go about like the production and they show how like, you know, Disney makes sustainable stuff and we live with the land in Disney. Um, Cause obviously and that would be a little more depressing if they were talking about the fish. Um, but I think that it would be neat if you kind of boarded like a sub like vehicle, you went through the different scenes and they went through different tanks that had like kind of like how Nemo does in the end scene, where instead of like the actual ride being like a physical scene, it's, it's a tank that you're riding past. Um, they could keep the projections onto the, the tanks. Cause some of them work pretty well, I think. Uh, maybe write, like write a story to kind of tie the Nemo characters in where you're exploring different biomes with them. But I don't like that Nemo is essentially like the storybook version of the movie in this pavilion. Um, I also kind of think that maybe like we could kind of keep Cur- Turtle Talk with Crush as like the IP tie-in if you really want to like really just tie in the IP hard, um, but also bring back more of those like exhibit things. I feel like the last couple times that I've gone there, uh, the sea lions, nobody's been up there with them, and like all of that stuff feels like kind of abandoned, which is sad. But I would love to see the seas the get sea some lions? actual, or not the sea lions, um, the seals or whatever's up top. The manatees. Uh, the manatees. Thank you. Those <laughs> okay, things. I was like, about to say, gigantic. <laughs> <laughs> can you can you tell it's been a while since I've been I was to the about to say, yeah. Clearly, they haven't been there in a while. If you didn't know they were manatees, yeah, no, I I haven't been there in a while. But I feel like the last, like the reason I don't go to the seas as often anymore is because I feel like well, one, I can't get into it. But uh, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> no, my my nice. big thing with the seas is I feel like I remember that pavilion being a lot more when I was younger. Like I feel like when I was younger that pavilion felt like there were more people working it there were more cast members there there were more like people trying to you know explain things about the the different animals and like you kind of got that edutainment but now it just feels like you're kind of walking through the fish tanks when you're not in the area and even the manatees upstairs they just have that video that plays like i cannot tell you in the couple times that i've walked through there when the last time I saw you a cast, uh, saw a cast member was, but I feel like when I was younger and we went there more often, I saw them pretty regularly. Yeah, yeah, that would be a nice like 
thing for them to incorporate more and add back. Because I, I love, as, you know, somebody who volunteered at a zoo doing what pretty much what they do but get paid to do. I love interacting with those types of displays. I love, you know, even if they just had something as simple as, like, a turtle that uh, kids can touch. You know, the shell of a turtle or something. Or, like, bones, like skulls and teeth yeah. and stuff that kids can pick up and hold in their hands. It makes it, like, real to them. You know, well, you know what? What, like, sorry, my, uh, my, this ties right into Beth's point of, like, giving kids things to touch and see. Um, a memory that I have very specifically, not of the seas, but of Rafiki's Planet Watch, was they used to do this thing where a cast member would have solidified animal poop and they oh, would yeah. show you the different yeah. sizes. And I feel like I have this very distinct memory of me being a kid and seeing that. And I, yeah. like, give me something. I mean, I'm not saying give me fish poop, but like give me something to like, you know, give give the kids something that is a memory to hold on to. Yeah. I mean, if I really want an aquarium, I can kind of do that at home is my my point. Yeah. What were you going to say, Brian? (laughs) Oh, no, just back to the, uh, you know, talking about having cast members there to talk about it, you know, I, I. if I recall correctly, the last time that like I did the behind the seeds tour, it was a um, it was a college program cast member that was doing it who was you know, um, uh, I believe some type of biology major or something along those lines, like, th- like what they were going to college for. Yeah, so you know, it seems like it would make sense to have you know college program students that are doing biology, marine biology, something like that in the seas pavilion talking about that. I mean. You know, I, I feel like that's not a big spin for Disney to do that and have a couple extra people in there making it more interactive. Mm-hmm. You know, what would also be kind of interesting to add in there, too, is um, kind of a similar thing to like Rafiki's Planet Watch, but like show how they take care of some of the, the injured sea life. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, you can't really do that regularly, but having having something that's like, hey, you know sometimes fish get hurt and this is how we take care of them like i feel like that's that's a thing that not a lot of people really know about yeah. i'm sure it's probably not that interesting but oh it i would bet be, it is that sounds it might be. like how do you do surgery on a fish like do you have to keep them underwater like how does it work i don't know yeah i'm ignorant i want to know i'm gonna, gonna have learn. to google this now do surgery they got a little a mask of water fish. that they put on them like what do they do <laughs> Anybody ever think about stuff like that? Oh, this is actually fascinating. Um, so there's this article on PBS about fish surgery, and there's a video of them doing surgery on a goldfish, uh, and it's got a tube of water running to its mouth. What? Wow. Yeah, here I'm going to save this picture and send it to the group chat. The video is unavailable on PBS's website now, but like this picture alone makes me feel like they probably could get away with doing even if it was just a video of like hey, you know, this is what happens. It might be pretty cool. Yeah. Very cool. <laughs> yeah. Right. And I think like those are things that that could be more educational. And I I feel like the one thing about edutainment that we've kind of gotten away from is that for for kids it gives you those things to hold on to and you know obviously learn about. But at the same time like for adults that stuff is also fascinating. Yeah, definitely. I mean, and the, and plus that's part of the charm of going to Disney is like feeling like a kid and part of that is the edutainment where you can learn something and be kind of amazed by what you're learning yeah my also not serious uh addition to the seas was to throw in some kind of uh like original version of kilimanjaro safaris where you're chasing like dolphin poachers (laughs) through the sea in a boat yeah in a boat uh But that's that is totally unrealistic and would never happen. Um, yeah, especially my other because they some... don't even have the poaching plot line in Kilimanjaro Safaris <laughs> anymore. I, you know, here's before also, we wait. Are dolphin poachers a thing? 
Uh, I know whale poachers are. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Dolphins were just kind of like the throw it into mean, the wall probably, thing. Like, <laughs> they you probably think about, are. Like, a side show. They got to get the dolphin somewhere, right? Yeah. I guess. Or like yeah. a sketchy aquarium. Here's a a thought that I'm kind of just throwing around here. Um, there's a lot of the seas that guests can't really go into, right? Because there's like so many backstage tours. Right. Um, what if we just like maybe opened them up a little bit, like open the seas up, give us like a show a- about the animals that they're rehabilitating and and stuff like that. It, honestly, even if they didn't do a video, put in some kind of show that's like hey this is how you take care of a you know a dolphin that's in captivity um this is why we have them in captivity because you know they can't go back to the wild and things like that like if they opened that up as a public show that happened like kind of like the bird show that happened in animal kingdom that would probably be a lot more of a hit than you know oh for sure than the actual pavilion is right now aquarium has a dolphin show so it's I'm not pretty like sure it's Universal impossible. has one too. Oh, well, not a dolphin show, but an animal show. Yeah, honestly, I would think it would be cool if they just did like a behind the scenes esque thing where you just paid like twenty five bucks and you got to have somebody guide you around behind like behind the scenes and tell you about the aquariums and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Even if you didn't get to interact with any of the animals, you just like when we did the the dive quest, you know, a lot of the time that we spent was doing stuff like that. Obviously that's a much more expensive experience because you're getting to dive in it, but people would do it if it were, you know, just walking around and relatively inexpensive. Yeah. I I am, um, again, because I am blissfully ignorant of the, the tours that happen in the Seas Pavilion. Um, there's Dive Quest and isn't there another one? That they do. There's a dolphin. Yeah, there's a dolphin okay. experience. You that where I think you get, you don't like dive or anything. You're just in like a wading pool type of thing that you interact with the dolphin. Okay, so I'm looking at this now because I was trying to scroll through it real quick before I moved off this topic. Uh, that is a hundred percent correct, but it seems like it is the idea that I was trying to pitch as a free thing. So therefore, Disney will never do it. Right. Um, <laughs> If anything, they will take my thing and run with it as a paid extra. Um, (laughs) But that also brings up another point. That's kind of why I was thinking about this is like, I feel like zoos have um, this, like a lot of zoos have these things where like they're different animal encounters. And I feel like the seas would be prime for something like that. Even if it was an extra thing, like give me an up close experience with some turtles. Um, let me learn about how you take care of them and things like that. And honestly, I would pay for that multiple times over. Yeah, just put it on, like, put it on the activities guide as like a, you know, we do this every two hours or whatever. We did. And people just show up. It was like three or four years ago now. We did a, a penguin encounter encounter at the Baltimore Zoo or Baltimore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was the zoo. Um, and that was probably one of the coolest, coolest experiences I've had on vacation. Cause it was just like, Hey, you're in this room with like eight penguins and they're just wandering around and you can just pet them. Yeah. Now imagine doing that at Disney and it's like so much cooler. <clears throat> yeah. Me and Laz did one at my local zoo that was like a tortoise version. And we like went into the tortoise enclosures, like. We got to touch like the little time, like the radiated tortoises, which are pretty small. But then we also got to go into the Galapagos tortoise exhibit and like feed them hibiscus flowers. And it was so much fun. And we got to like touch their heads and shells and stuff. It was awesome. God, I love turtles. I would, if they had a (laughs) turtle tour thing, I would 100% do that on every trip. Same. (laughs) As that kid once said, I like turtles. Uh, all right, somebody else take over because I have talked about the seas for a half hour, and uh, <laughs> that is not how I expected tonight to go. Uh, well, while we're under the sea, I'll uh, pick up on on a quick one that I had and uh, do Journey of the Little Mermaid, just because I think that this one has some very obvious areas to put a little bit of effort into and really improve on. You're gonna uh, change it all to Halle Bailey? 
I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm still waiting to see how it goes, you know, but um, <laughs> no, I, this attraction has always felt to me like there were two Imagineers working on it and one of them like poured their heart and soul into it and the other one forgot about the assignment mm-hmm. and turned in their work, you know, the day of. So, yes. Um, yeah, you know, it's just like, it's not so much that bad parts of this ride stand out like because they're bad it's just because there's some really big highlights to it and it's so weird going from like you know the under the sea scene into ursula and it's like it's so bad in the under the sea scene and then the animatronic for ursula is amazing and you know i I think that really you can focus on just redoing that one room let's go back and dim the lights a little bit all right let's <laughs> let's touch up some of these animatronics maybe get rid of some of them if that's what we need to do let's go for a uh, you know quality over quantity thing here and just uh dial it back a little bit but you know fix this room because it really takes away from the rest of the attraction i feel like yeah i mean yeah if you just darken the lights that would even just make it that, i know that, that there's i know that they made it lighter because kids were getting scared or whatever just add more like ambient lighting or you know what kids gonna get scared sometimes you know if, <laughs> if they're getting scared and under the sea maybe they need that to yeah. like help them grow as a as a human i mean look this, this is coming from a dad now all right look sometimes your kid's gonna get scared you, you can't change up all the attractions because of that there this we go. is the we, we one got it from ride. the dad's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> this is the one ride that like has a specific scene that is so fixable. I it it boggles my mind that we haven't gone this route yet. It it is so jarringly bad that I I feel like it is it, it should not have been, you know, changed the way it was. They just dim the lights like you said. Maybe throw in a couple static animatronics, uh, or even you know, give us some of the ones that like aren't super plussed up, where they're just kind of spinning on a, a like a little spinner track, and it's not like a you know sixty piece animatronic. It could just be a stagnant fish that sin- swims in a circle. Yeah, like there's so many little things that they could have done here. This is just I don't know. Yeah. Also, uh, while we're talking about this, can we talk about Ariel's hair for the like thirtieth time? Oh, because yeah. <laughs> this is one of those plastic wig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like you know, I'm just give her regular hair. You know, I am. I can suspend the illusion that it's underwater and supposed to be floating or whatever. Just give her regular hair, and I'll be okay with it. Honestly, it's a huge cop out because I don't. I'm gonna do a little bit of like a cultural reference here. So sorry for anybody who's not a fan of drag, but there are drag queens out there that could that have wigs that are just as big and shaped as that, but they actually look like hair. Well, and that's that's a very good point. That's kind of wild to think about. Is they just slapped this big hunk of plastic on her. And in some scenes, it doesn't look horrible. But this one, it just, it is very noticeable. Yeah. Yes. Very. <laughs> I don't know. I'm watching a, a version of this ride from three years ago where the video looks all right. But I know if I was riding this ride, I would be able to see, like, all of the... uh not fun stuff. <laughs> yes, for sure. You know, here's another thought. Um, Disney's pretty big on projection mapping. They could probably project some fish on the ceiling. <laughs> and that would be an easy fix for this. Honestly, yeah. just anything <laughs> to distract us from the current animatronics that are in there right now. And the sticks that they're on. Yes. Specifically. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. All right. Give us another one. 
Okay. So I had, I went with a, an idea that I think is feasible and would be popular. And okay. then I went, also had an idea that is a very deep cut and nobody would care about it except for me. But oh I'm boy. dreaming here. Okay. Yeah. So, so my, I, my popular idea that I think would be really easy and feasible and add a little spice. Not that it necessarily needs it because the line is always crazy long. But if they just made Frozen Ever After, Frozen 2 themed, <sighs> the better Frozen movie. <laughs> I feel like they could do a lot of cool stuff with like, you know, the whole concept of like the different spirits, like the wind spirit and the fire spirit and the water spirit. They could incorporate those elements. They could just change the costumes a little bit. It would not be very difficult. It would add a little allure to people who are over it and it would add more excitement to people who haven't written it yet do we also get the uh plus up to the animatronics like yes, no more projection I mean, facing <laughs> they definitely need to do something about that because some of those are weird on candy valley i think the only ones that really work are like olaf and sin yeah yeah the people definitely need some work definitely I don't think the projection mapping people is inherently bad. It's just not done well in that attraction. Or pretty I much any of the other ones. I feel well, yeah, like. I guess that's <laughs> Well, it's the uh, Seven Doors Mine Train has them and they're okay. They're okay, yeah. But, like, I, I, the problem is when you, like, Seven Doors Mind Train is cartoony humanoid characters. Like, uh, there is not, I mean, I guess Snow White is supposed to be semi realistic, but like, the dwarves are, are very caricature, and it kind of works because of that. Uh, yeah. All of the characters in Frozen that have projection mapped stuff to them are supposed to be people, and it just doesn't really work. Yeah. Um, I mean, ideally, we would get actual anim animatronics in the same vein as like the beauty and the beast ride that they did recently in what tokyo was it or you know the other frozen ride that they have overseas i don't even know if i've seen that i mean i'll find it but anyway i'm just trying to give myself a selfishly i am trying to give myself a little bit more of a reason to ride this attraction again because i feel like i've ridden it like two or three times and i'm good like, I'm fine. I'll yeah. write it again in another couple years, maybe. But I am willing to argue with anybody that says Frozen is better than Frozen 2. So hit me up in my I time. I wholeheartedly <laughs> agree with that sentiment. <laughs> Going back, Frozen feels like such a bland movie in comparison to Frozen 2. Right, and listen, I like Frozen. When it, I saw it in theaters the day it came out, and I liked it a lot. The more that people shoved it in my face, I feel like the less I liked it. I did get a little Frozen fatigue, but I still don't think it's bad. It's fine. It's still better than some of the crap that Disney's put out recently. But Frozen 2 is just such a deeper and more meaningful story, in my opinion. Yeah. Was that Sorry. was your? That was my. I think. Or your realistic? No, I feel like that was my realistic slash popular idea. Okay. Because I think it's not like super unfeasible. It wouldn't take a whole lot of effort and money, except for them. I guess if we're going with the good animatronics, that would take some time and money. But otherwise, it's all. It it could almost even be an overlay, you know, if they were selective about it. My deep cut is wildly unrealistic and absolutely never like in anyone's lifetime ever going to happen. But it was an idea that occurred to me that I really liked. And I fully am prepared to be shot down by everyone that's listening to this. Because I'm the only person in the entire universe that apparently cared about Tomorrowland, the movie. <laughs> but oh there's boy. this scene where he's writing it's a small world 
and it scans his pen and it drops. There's like a drop that he goes down into. And I just thought it would be really cool that you not that you have to like scan the pen or anything. If you had two different tracks, right? You have the regular small world track for all the people that are insane and actually enjoy riding that attraction. And then you have the different track for people who want an attraction that's actually fun. And that's the Tomorrowland attraction where you drop like a Pirates of the Caribbean style drop. And then you go into this room and this is not really on par with the movie, but it's still tying into it. It would be really easy to do screens. I know we hate screens, but I think it could work in this situation because there's really no other way you could do it and have like the weird utopia of Tomorrowland and you go through like different parts of it and et cetera, et cetera. That's my half-baked, extremely unpopular hot take idea. <laughs> I That'd be pretty cool. I think it would be more fun than Small World. <laughs> yeah. I have a couple throw them at the wall kind of half-baked ideas, too, if you want me to go into those. And maybe somebody can expand on them if they feel like it. Uh, yeah. The two rides that I tried very hard to, to figure something out for were uh, Space Mountain. And I feel like that's one that easily could get a refurb and get Ooh. something plus up to it. I'm curious um, to hear yours. I I couldn't find anything solid to stick to it. I feel like the problem that I have with Space Mountain is less about the actual attraction itself and more about how bumpy that ride is. Mm -hmm. uh, so like without gutting the entire track and starting from scratch, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like there wasn't much I could figure out. Um, if you have one for that, by all means, go for it. Because no, I, I ended up really ripping out the whole attraction. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, the only thing that I could think of was like maybe do a little bit more to enhance the projections on the the inside of the attraction. Um, I feel like the the actual track itself is so fast that like doing anything physical. Um, in terms of like props or anything or trying to give it any sort of inherent storyline uh is just not gonna work <laughs> but yeah that was the problem i had with that one i couldn't quite find a way to really refurbish it um which i think is like the not to speak for everyone this that's the the fun thing about doing these ride refurbs is sometimes you realize that like maybe there's not a good way to fix this <laughs> I think this has probably been said before, maybe even by us, but I feel like just flip the lights on and that becomes <laughs> instantly a much ter more terrifying attraction. Yeah. I would not let the lights turn on. <laughs> I would totally do it once and then probably never again. Yeah. Um, Did anybody else want to give a Space Mountain one before I give my secondary kind of throw it at the wall? Uh, no, I mean, it. if if you want to hear what I ripped out and put in yeah, there, yeah. I would love to. Well, my my whole thought process with this was just like, I I know this is like Disney blasphemy right here, but I feel like Space Mountain is going to quickly feel kind of redundant with Tron coming in. Yeah. Um, so it's like, do we need another? I don't want to say crappier, but come on, it's going to be comparatively a crappier coaster once Tron opens. Um, so I say rip it out, and I thought do something new and experience. I've kind of said doing something like this before, but what if we did some kind of like VR, like Ooh. space race type deal? Like what if we had like a, a, a spaceship theme kind of like, vr mario kart thing and i thought you could have the people come into the space mountain show building and what i think would be really cool is that like while you're waiting in line to have like an actual screen of the races occurring so that the people could mm. watch it split people up into two teams um you know and then do that you you get to keep the show building that everybody loves it's an iconic part of the park but you know at the end of the day i don't think we really need Space Mountain and Tron being right next to each other. Yeah. So are you saying VR in the sense of like you're in a simulator or you put on a VR headset and then you ride the roller coaster? 
I mean, I think it'd be very, I, I think the, the only realistic way to do it would be to kind of have like just a VR headset and each person sit at kind of like, you know, uh, some type of seat with kind of just like a control board joystick type deal to fly mm -hmm. these uh these spaceships i don't think you could actually do it as a ride but you know just utilize the show building itself as kind of like a theater for everyone to sit in and then like i was saying you know a screen to be able to see the races as they're going on so yeah i mean i definitely agree that's a cool concept but doesn't sea world have a vr roller coaster they do so they could just do that too. The thing though is, is like, yeah, but then that doesn't really eliminate the issue with of it being rough. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's that's just true. like, I think the cool thing about the Sea World one, at least what I've seen, is you know it's like a newer uh, steel roller coaster that's supposed to be very smooth, and you're you know it's the VR thing is like you're underwater. It's like, well, right. you know, I don't think when you fly through space, it feels like you're going down like, you know, a cobblestone road on an old right. bike. Yeah, to so I think, <laughs> yeah, I think you're going to get thrown out of the immersion of it pretty quickly. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That's interesting. I think I have some reservations with VR coasters just because I feel like, I personally, as somebody that wears glasses, uh, have a lot of trouble with VR, but mm, that's that a problem that I'm sure could be easily fixed. I also think like my res my reservations with VR is that obviously the headset is a little uncomfortable, but I feel like there have been times where I have worn a VR headset and not worn my glasses and it's worked out better. So maybe that'll work out better for a roller coaster. <laughs> My uh, my other throw it at the wall and see how it sticks is I think uh, and maybe we're just never gonna get this and maybe they'll just rip this right out. I think Big Thunder Mountain could really use a little bit of a refurb. Mm, um, and hear me out on this one. I think that the attraction uh, and I'm I'm gonna start going into this and I feel like I know the direction everybody's gonna start thinking and I will point it out when I get there. Um. I, f I think that this ride could do from having a little bit more of a cohesive story uh, while staying as a roller coaster, which is an interesting thought. Um, I was thinking like, what if we took uh, big Thunder mountain railroad and put it as like a roller coaster that's themed into going into the mines uh, as you will, if it's a mining car, um, but use like some physical and practical effects, like, when you're underground shooting like steam and stuff out through like different areas to kind of make it a little bit more intense. Um, maybe do some kind of like practical effect where it looks like bats are flying at you as you go through different caves. And as I was kind of thinking this, I was like, well, they do also have another mine car themed roller coaster <laughs> semi close to this in the park. But I feel like this could be the more like adult plussed up version of that attraction if they were to kind of revamp it a little bit, um, yeah. you would have to also put it through different scenes where it would go through the dark and that would be pretty cool. I don't know. I didn't think of a fully fleshed out idea for that one, but I think that that's one that doesn't feel like it needs to be plussed up, but the very obvious like ideas for it are kind of there. No, I think that's good. I mean, again, this is kind of going back to like the haunted mansion thing that we said at the beginning. It doesn't have to be a big thing. Just give us a little something to keep, you know these classic attractions a little bit more fresh yeah on that yeah. note i'd like to add and i know we've said this before but good god can we do something about the lift chain and not make it so <laughs> ungodly loud um while we're doing just little things can we just make it so that the tiki birds don't click as loud yes oh all the animatronics all the old ones country bear jamboree every time you know buff blinks it's like it sounds like someone's clicking a pin in my ear and it's just uh yes well, I honestly totally agree. Like we would miss it too <laughs> i think that like the charm <laughs> of the tiki charming. room is definitely yeah. like some of the clicking in it but at the same time that show might be better if i didn't have to hear the birds clicking we could just get real birds like Walt intended. <laughs> <laughs> could you imagine if that attraction was half bird, like animatronic show, and then like there were just real birds thrown in the mix? I'm just like pooping on everybody. 
I like it. Oh. Kind of gambling when you go in there. When I you know. Get the seat, it's the you know? thrill. <laughs> I yeah. Uh, that that was all I had from in the idea bank from me. So I don't know if you guys have anything else you want to throw out. As usual, Disney. Listen to us, please. Just take a <laughs> listen few to us. Concepts. Hire us to be, you know, Imagineers. Just we'll help yeah. you guys out. Come on, we've been doing this for a while now. Totally. Any final thoughts? Uh, I don't know. I, I think this was a fun one. I feel like Disney should hire us as uh, Imagineers. <laughs> yeah, or at least like consultants. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, contract work. We don't have to actually be, you know, Disney employees, but we'll you know, get Honestly, paid and give you ideas. I'd be cool with them just listening to the podcast and taking our ideas and giving us a free ticket to experience it when it comes out. Like, I'm not asking for much here. <laughs> <laughs>